Okay, so this is a quick overview of some of the changes I made to the free template to kind of give you some ideas on how you might modify your own. Uh, the first thing is I added a gate screen, and that's usually just a way to get the learner to stop, give them some instructions, and then they hit start and they come to their interaction. In this case, we've got these interactions. I can click, it launches a video, so I can play the video here. Uh, and when I'm done, I can come back and you can see I've got a visited state, and then I can go to the next video. Uh, so that's the modification or the, my modified version. And then here's what the original looks like. Now the original um, is set up to click to a layer, and then the layer looks like that. Uh, so this is where my what I'm starting with, and I want to get to a point where I can use this. So one of the first points is don't allow the template to dictate your design. You know the template's a great starting point, might give you some ideas on on some design. Uh, you may have some novelty in the template that works for your course. So that's all great, but don't allow the template to uh, dictate how you design your course. So in this case, I've downloaded this free template. I like it because they've got these little computer icons. I'm doing software training. The guy's sitting in the computer, and so I want to have little links out to different software modules. Uh, so it's a nice way to present my video tutorials. Uh, what I want to do though is I want to get rid of all this busyness, and so I don't need all these little boxes. So I just need the boxes for my videos, and then I'm going to um, uh, clean up the layer. So let's go ahead and look at a few of the design decisions uh, that I made. So first thing is when we look at this, well, let's look at the timeline. Um, if I if I hide everything and just enable the office image, uh, you can see that it's pretty busy, right? So I want to get rid of all these lines and get rid of some of the, the busyness visually. So the way I do that, let me um, re-enable everything. The way I get rid of that busyness is the first thing I want to do is get rid of these things. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of all of these except for one. So I want to set my first one, get the formatting right, and then I'll duplicate that. So I'm going to hide this for now so it's not visible. And now what I want to do is get rid of these squiggly lines because this is basically an image and so I can't edit it. Now ideally you could edit it and get rid of that, but let's say you're working with this and you can't. So to get rid of it we're just going to cover that with a shape. So we're going to take a shape here and we're going to we can cover it, and um, we'll just assume this is okay. Uh, we're going to go to Format, and we use the eyedropper and pick the background color, and then get rid of the shape outline. And so that that's kind of how we do that. I'm going to hit Control, and then I can just duplicate it, and then add another shape on this side. And I'm just going to nudge it, and then I can hit Control again, and then duplicate shape up on this side here. And we'll assume that we spent a lot of time to get just this right. Oops. Well that doesn't work right. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So we're going to cover up this shape and let's see how far we can pull this down. That goes down to the table. And we'll just create another small shape to go on top. All right, so I've got these covered. We'll assume this is all cleaned up perfectly. I'm going to select all those rectangles, right? So I'm going to just go here. There's four rectangles, right? I'm going to hit Control G to group them, and then I can just bring them down a level. I'm going to lock these, so then I can't accidentally move those. So that's how we get kind of a cleaned up interface. If you wanted to, you could move. This, these images, right? You could move this image over, um, and then that might actually give you more space to work with. So let's ungroup that. So that would give you more space to work with, right? Because you'd have um, this whole area to put your modules on. So there are a lot of things you can do with that. We're going to let's undo that here. Oops, let's see how far back we can undo. Oops, here, let's, we'll drag it there. Okay, we'll assume this looks good. I'm going to take my 
box here. I'm going to make it a little larger. I only need five of them. And so that looks good. Now what I'm going to do is on the box here, I'm going to go to the states. I'm going to go to my normal state and we'll add some text in here. And so we'll just say um, this is module one. So that could be my text. I want to center it, make it a little larger, maybe bold. If I wanted a color, let me hit done editing states. Let's say I wanted to pull in one of these colors. I might want the brown from his hair to be my text color. So what I'll do is create a quick color swab or a patch. And I'm going to do color picking. So we're going to come over here. We're going to do the eyedropper. So now I've got his color. And you could do this for some of the other colors too. We'll just do that to show you how that would work. Um, and then let's do one more uh, for the chair back. So now we've got these color swabs. So then I can quickly use these. So like in this case, I'm going to use this brown. So I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to come back in here because I want to color this text, but I have to go into the state. And when I go inside the state, I don't have access to the color. I've got that onion skin look. So I'm just going to paste this swab that we put on here. So now I can select the text. And I'm going to choose the eyedropper, choose this color, and we'll make it a little larger. And then we'll delete this. So that's a quick way to be able to use the colors that I have in here. So you can quick create some quick color swabs or patches that you can use um, throughout your slides. Uh, so once this is done, um, I need to just create a link to a layer. So I'm going to delete these layers because I only actually need five. So I'm going to create my first layer and then um, I'll come in here. Let's say I don't even need all this stuff here. Um, actually, we might. Let's take. We'll take the button. So I'm going to put the button off screen. We'll get rid of the rest of this. Let's insert the video. So I'm going to insert a video from file, and we'll just do checklist. Will be our first one. Now the video fits perfectly. I want to have a play bar. So what I'm going to do are a couple of things. I like to have the user control uh, the video. So I'm going to have it start on trigger. So we want to play the video. Um, when clicked or from trigger, it doesn't really matter. Or actually, let's just do it when clicked. And um, I'm going to add a play bar. So we're going to show video controls below. And now I'm going to scale this up a little, and we'll just position this. And you can you can play around with that. So now I've got my video. It's going to play in here. And again, you know, if, it depends on the size of your video and what your needs are. And then I've got this little back the button. So let's just go ahead and add back. And I can compress this a little. Maybe make it a little smaller. So I got my little pill. Put it on here. Um, make the text a little smaller. So it's got a little back button. So what do we want the back button to do? We just want the back button to hide the layer. So let's go ahead and add a trigger on that button. So what do I want to do? I want to hide this layer when the user clicks that. Here, hit OK. And um, looks like we already had a trigger on there, so let's delete the extra one. So what should happen is we're going to put a trigger on here. What do we want to do? We want to show layer one. So, and actually let me go back here. Let's so go to timeline. Let's say this was my I think this was the checklist. So I might call this checklist so I know what it was. And I want layer one to also be titled the same. And the reason I want to do that is I want checklist to go to checklist layer. So see, this way it's an easy way to troubleshoot if something's not working. Uh, the only other thing we have here is if we go to the states, you'll notice this visited state. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select the little icon. I'm going to move that down. All right. So now if we preview this, this should go to this layer. I can click and play the video. Stop it when I'm done. I hit back. 
and now I'm back to my module. Then I would go ahead and duplicate these and do the same thing with the layers. So just duplicate the layers, duplicate these boxes. Um, we can get rid of these color swabs uh, when you're done and then you have a nice interaction. The only other thing is that gate screen. The way I have the gate screen set up is I'll create a new layer. I usually call it start. And what I want to do is let's put a let's just go ahead and put a shape on top of that. And we will um, let's make it uh, in this case I think I made it white. So we'll just make it white, no line color. And what we'll do is we can just add some text here. You know, um, we'll just do the lorem ipsum. So we've got some lorem ipsum text, and then we put a button here to start. So we'll just do start. And again, you would colorize that. Now, what we want to do is if we think about this, when this slide launches, I want to show this first. I want to kind of give the user, set them up, give them some time to think through what they need to do. So what I want is a trigger. So what do I want to do? I want to show the layer, choose my start layer, when the timeline of the slide starts. Hit OK. Now I go to the start layer and here what I want to do is I can just add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to hide the layer, this layer when the user clicks the button. So if we preview this, what should happen is we immediately get to the start screen. I can give my instructions. I hit start. That's going to hide this layer. And then I can go through, watch my videos, hit back, and I get a little visited state. So that's a quick way to modify a free template. So uh, the key thing is don't allow the template to dictate how you want to design your course. You know, you have a template, there may be a good look to it, there may be a, a novel use for it. So that's all fine. Uh, figure out what your needs are and then modify the template to, to better meet your needs. And then um, hopefully some of these little tips and tricks that I use, the color picking and the start screens and some of those things uh, will help you out.